Subaru Forester with the 2.5 liter engine, engine oil cooler reseal. I'm Brian Nesser from How To Automotive. I'm gonna walk you step by step through the process of resealing the engine oil cooler. To reseal it, you're gonna to need to change the O-ring. I will link this up in the description of the video. To get started, we need to get the front of the vehicle off the ground. If you're doing this at home, use floor jacks and jack stands, and you wanna jack it up high enough where you can crawl underneath. So right here where the oil filter is, is just above it is the oil cooler and the O-ring here on the top leaks. So I'm going to show you how to change that O-ring out. So one of the things we need to do is take the oil filter off. And since we're doing that, I thought it would be a good time to go ahead and drain the oil and change it out also. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen up the drain plug here and get the oil draining. While the oil is draining, I'll go ahead and loosen up the oil filter and go ahead and remove it. If you're lucky, you'll be able to spin the oil filter off by hand, but if it's too tight, you'll use a pair of oil filter pliers like this. Go ahead and loosen up the oil filter and spin it off. I recommend you get a new filter when we go to put this back together, not reusing the old one. Now on the stud that the oil filter was screwed onto is a 24 millimeter nut that's mounted on it. We're gonna need a 24 millimeter socket and we're gonna loosen this up. The socket needs to be a deep socket. So once you get the socket on there, you're going to hook up your ratchet to it and you're going to go counterclockwise and loosen it up. And then you're going to spin the, the center nut all the way out. So once you remove the center nut here and drop the uh, oil cooler down, a little bit of oil is going to leak out. So you want to make sure your bucket is still handy or nearby. On the side of the transmission cooler, there's two coolant lines. We're not going to take those off. We're just going to pull it down right here like this and we're going to take that O-ring out. So the next thing you're going to need to do is get a pick tool. And with the tool, we're going to pick the orange O-ring out right here. So you just hook it in there and pull it out. Once you get the O-ring removed, it's going to look like this. So now you're just going to toss that in the trash. We're going to replace it for a new one. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to clean up the housing itself. I just used a clean shop rag to clean the uh, mating surface on the cylinder head and then also the uh, the cooler itself so I wiped off as much of the debris and oil as it possibly can and if you need to you can spray some parts cleaner on the rag and then wipe everything down and that'll help out. Once we get it all cleaned up we're going to go ahead and install the new o-ring on the back side here so you're going to press the o-ring into the groove it's, it kind of looks and feels like the o-ring is too big but as you keep pressing it in there and working it in there it'll it'll eventually sit in there nice and flush once you got it seated in there, you can put a thin layer of fresh oil on the seal. Now you can go ahead and lift it back up into position. And then the bolt here, I just wiped it down with a rag real quick. And then I started the uh, the bolt here, so I just threaded it in. And uh, you want to make sure you definitely start this by hand. So you just uh, thread it in and run it in until all the way to a snug. And you'll have to twist the housing slightly left or right to get it to sit flush on the cylinder head here. Once you got it run in all the way to a snug, now you can switch over to a torque wrench and we're going to torque this center nut down to 40 foot pounds. When torquing it down, you don't want to jerk the torque wrench. You want to give it steady, even pressure until it fully torques to 40 foot pounds. Now that it's torqued down, I'm going to take this time to thoroughly wipe down the outside of the housing with a rag. I also sprayed a little bit of the parts cleaner on the rag to help uh, remove some of the grease and grime and dirt. And just get the uh, housing real as clean as you can get it. Now I'm going to screw on a new oil filter. I put a little fresh layer of oil on the seal here. And now I'll spin it onto the housing. And I'm just going to hand tighten it as tight as I can get it with, by hand. Once we get the oil filter secure, the next step is going to be is to uh, install the drain plug. So you, I recommend you check the drain plug washer. If it needs to be replaced, replace it. If it's in good shape, you can reuse them. I don't use any power tools for this particular job. I just did everything by hand with all hand tools. So I put the drain plug back in and tighten it up with a wrench. Now that the oil filter and drain plug are installed and tightened up, now I take this time to wipe everything down and clean as much as I can. So, so I like to use a parts cleaner or brake spray cleaner and just give it a good spraying. You can also use engine degreaser, whatever you like to, to uh, clean oil messes up. So spray it down and wipe it down. Once you get it all cleaned up to where you're satisfied, then we can go ahead and lower the vehicle back down. Now we're ready to fill the engine up with engine oil. It took about five and a quarter quarts. 
Now that we got uh, oil in the vehicle, I'm going to go ahead and start the vehicle up and let it run and double check that there's no leaks. After that, I'll shut the vehicle off and I'll double check the oil level. So I will link up all the parts and tools that I use in this video in the description. That way, if you need to pick any of those up, you can find them there. I'm Brian Nelson from How To Automotive. I'd like to thank you guys for watching, encourage you to subscribe, invite you to head over to the howtoautomotive.com website for more valuable videos like this. Thank you again for watching.